Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to make the ASP32 act as a soft API and how to set up a very simple HTTP web server on top of it using both the ASP32 and the Arduino core. Um, in terms of hardware, I'm using a ASP32 Fire Beetle board from DF Robot and I will leave the link in the description in case you want to take a look. Uh, so, this tutorial sits on top of uh, previous two tutorials where we saw uh, how we can configure the SP32 to act as a soft API uh, and another one where we explained how to set up uh, a synchronous HTTP web service, a web server um, to be configured on the SP32. So in this tutorial, we'll uh, uh, join the two, uh, the two parts and, uh, and um, set up the server uh, to, to operate over the soft API uh, mode of the SP32. So moving on to the to the code, we'll start by including this Wi-Fi.h library, which will be needed to set up the soft API, and this ASP async web server uh, .h library, uh, which gives us the API needed to configure the synchronous uh, HTTP web server, HTTP web server. Uh, so. Uh, as we did before, uh, since we are uh, our ASP32 is going to host the uh, Wi-Fi network, uh, we need to define both the network name uh, or the SSID, uh, which is a short for Service Set Identifier, uh, which is kind of the technical name we give uh, to the network name. I'm going to call uh, my ASP32 uh, AP, but you can call wherever you want. Uh, just take in consideration that the name that you put here will be the one that will be shown uh, to the devices that will scan nearby uh, Wi-Fi networks. In my case, I'm going to use my computer later, um, but you can use, for example, a smartphone or, or other device. Uh, we also need to set up a password for the server, so only uh, the devices that know this uh, uh, password can connect to it, uh, making it more secure, obviously. In order to, to later set up the uh, HTTP web server, we'll need an object of this class, a sync web server, um, that will expose the API we need to configure the routes of the server. Uh, keep in mind that as input of the constructor of this class, we need to pass the HTTP port where the server will be listening. We will use port 80 because it is the default HTTP port. So. Uh, moving on to the setup function, uh, we'll start to, to open the serial connection like we usually do to output uh, some content and then we'll start uh, the soft API by calling this soft API method um, on the Wi-Fi extern variable, which is the, the variable that we usually use um, both to connect to a Wi-Fi network uh, or in this case to set up the soft API. So, uh, as input, this method receives the network name and the password and uh, will take care of everything uh, for us and will set up the, the um, soft API. Uh, after the setting up the soft API is finished, uh, we'll print its uh, IP, the IP of the SP32 that is hosting that Wi-Fi network, uh, because even though it will act kind of uh, as a router in a, in a regular network, uh, we'll want to be able to, to reach this um, this SP32 device because it will host the HTTP uh, web server. So we'll need uh, its IP and we can obtain it by calling this soft uh, AP IP uh, method also on the Wi-Fi extern variable. And this will be the, the IP return here, will be the IP that we need to use um, in the client. So the client that will try to reach the HTTP web server uh, will first need to connect to, to the uh, the Wi-Fi network hosted by our ASP32 and then it will need to use uh, the IP return here uh, to reach the HTTP web server. So, uh, moving on, uh, we need to configure the routes of our uh, web server. This is basically what we have did uh, in the previous tutorial uh, regarding the introduction to the HTTP web server. So basically we'll call this on method on our async uh, web server object. And um, this will allow us to specify a route in our um, in our uh, web server. In in this case, the route will have the hello endpoint. So this second argument allows us to to specify which HTTP methods are allowed 
uh, in this route. In this case, we are going to allow only a simple, uh, uh, simple get methods because we are going to retrieve uh, an hello world message for illustration purposes. And as uh, third parameter, we need to pass um, callback function that will be executed whenever a request, an HTTP GET request, uh, is made on this route. Um, as we have explained before, um, this function needs to be uh, needs to respect a given signature defined by the uh, the HTTP web server libraries. So basically, it will need to return void and to uh, receive a pointer to uh, an object of the class async web server request, like we can see here. Um, and basically, the framework will take care of passing to this uh, callback function uh, the pointer to this object. So basically, this is all uh, handled under the hood for us. Note that this is uh, the C++ Lambda function syntax. Um, so we can declare this function anonymously instead of declaring a, a function, for instance, here. Um, in our code and using it here, uh, it's easier to declare it like inline because we are not going to reuse it. So we use this syntax. It's kind of a more advanced uh, syntax uh, from C++, but it's very useful. So in, in terms of implementation, it will be pretty simple. Basically, we are going to return uh, when when we receive a request in this route, we are going to return a hello world message to the client. We do this by calling the send method. Uh, on the request object. Um, as, as I've said, uh, note that we are going to receive not the actual object, but a pointer to it. So we need to use this operator in order to call the method. And then as first input, we pass the HTTP return code. Uh, we are going to return 200 because it's uh, um, an OK. And OK, everything went fine. Uh, it's not very important for this example, but we are going to keep things as clean as possible. So a second argument, we need to, to specify the content type uh, of, the, of the response we are going to return to the client, so the client knows how to interpret it. We are going to return a simple um, a simple uh, hello world sentence, so uh, we can specify the, the content as plain text. And finally, uh, we actually return uh, we return the actual uh, response, which will be a very simple hello world message. To finalize, uh, we call this begin method on our server object. So the, uh, from this point onward, the server should start listening to incoming HTTP requests. Recall that uh, this is an asynchronous uh, web server solution. Uh, so we don't need to, to um, periodically pull uh, some kind of object asking, is there a client, is there a client, is there a client, uh, like we had to do in the, in the original implementation of the HTTP web server for the ASPA266. So this solution is mu much more uh, um, robust and uh, much more optimized because we don't need to, to periodically call anything. We, know, we just know that this Enlic function will be called under the hood if a request is made here uh, on this route. So uh, it's a much, much cleaner implementation. So this is it in terms of code. Uh, I've already uploaded the code to my SP32 and I've already it already started to run. And if you open uh, after you complete the, 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 um, the upload procedure, if you open your Arduino uh, IDE serial monitor, you should get here an IP address, which will be the IP address of your SP32. You should copy it because the client um, will need to know this IP in order to reach the HTTP web server, so you should copy it. Uh, furthermore, um, if you open, uh, in this case I'm on Windows 8, but uh, depending on your, on your operating system, if you go to the list of available networks, you should now see uh, a new network, which is the with the name that we defined in the Arduino code. Uh, in my case, I called it my ASP32 uh, AP. Uh, so we should be able to connect to it. In my case, I'm already connected. In case you haven't done it yet, so uh, you need to, to connect to it using the password we defined in the code. So after the, the connection is finished, um, your computer should be connected to the network hosted by the ASP32. And uh, from this point onward, you should be able to, uh, to reach the HTTP web server uh, hosted in the SP32. 
So, uh, as I've mentioned, you should copy this, this IP address and the, simple, the simplest way to, to make an HTTP GET request to our server is opening a web browser. I'm using here Google Chrome. You should be able to use another one. And then on the address bar, you should try to reach this website and you put like HTTP uh, column slash slash uh, the IP address of your ASP32 and then slash uh, the route. Remember that we are trying to, to, to reach the LO route because it was the only one we have, um, we have defined in our, uh, in our web server. So now if I hit enter, as you can see, uh, I received the LO word message like we, we have defined in our code uh, and the web server is reachable as expected. Just to show you that I'm not connected to any other uh, Wi-Fi network, just the one hosted by the SP32. For instance, if I go here, let me try to go to Google. It says I cannot access this, this website and it says, yeah, sorry, this is in Portuguese, my operating system is in Portuguese, but it's, it basically says that I don't have an internet connection and that's true because the, um, the SP32, it's hosting its own Wi-Fi network, but it's not connected to the internet. So I can, I can reach the, the um, SP32 and it's a HTTP web server, but obviously I cannot reach other websites on the internet because my computer is not connected to the internet and the SP32 is not acting like an hotspot, it's not like uh, acting like a bridge, uh, it's nothing like that, it's just hosting its own Wi-Fi network. So, uh, this is it. Uh, this is very useful for more complex use cases. As I've explained in the previous video, you can use this to, for instance, to create an HTTP web server that serves, uh, serves uh, like uh, an HTML portal that allows uh, uh, when, when uh, someone buys a commercial product uh, to configure the connection to, to its own Wi-Fi network. Um, and you can implement many other features on top of uh, of the, the soft API. Uh, basically, um, anything or practically anything that you could do connected to, the, to a Wi-Fi network, like uh, setting up a socket server, a web socket server, uh, you should be able to do um, using the soft API. Uh, basically, uh, the, the only limitation, as I've said, is that the other devices also need to be connected to the soft API uh, hosted by the ASP32. Other than that, uh, they, they should be able to communicate with it. So this is, uh, 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 this is it. Uh, it's very simple to, to set up both the uh, HTTP web server and the soft API. Uh, hope you have liked the video. Thank you very much for watching.